actually let's let's do i'm sorry please come and stand for just a moment so that we can explore just one little thing before before we start so imagine that you're reaching up to a light bulb to your upper to the up to the right and so you watch how it is that you reach up to the light bulb and you think that you're so you move to stand on your right leg and you listen to if you're going to stand on your right leg and to have the power to reach up in what direction does your leg turn as you reach up where do you find the support in your foot it's on oh, it's over your right leg it's not your left just your right leg and you don't have to step up it's just that's it and you just watch now you can see that it's not only just your right leg that you're reaching up with. If you pay close attention, you realize that in order to keep this power of reaching up, that something takes place in your left leg as well. Yes, if you pay attention in your hip joints, if you could imagine. If you, if you turned your foot inward and you collapsed the inner part of your foot, what would the effect be as you, re as you reached up? What do you do with your right leg to support your ability to reach up? What direction does your leg, where do you find the support with your left foot as you begin to reach up? Yeah. So you, if you could imagine now what's taking place with the femurs in this pelvis, in the femoral head, relative to you reaching up, what direction? Your right leg has gone which way, clockwise or counterclockwise? And your left leg has done what? Has it gone clockwise as well? Or is it, what's happening in your, in your left leg? Is it just that you hike your hip up? Or is there something that you can do? Now, let's change the image just a little bit. Imagine now that you have a weight in your hand. And you're going to press the weight upward to put it on a shelf with your right hand. And so you notice that this is a slightly different movement. But again, watch where it is that you find the point of support from. Now, if you're pressing the weight upward, stand with your feet relatively parallel, not one in front of the other, just relatively parallel. So we're, we're looking to study something about the way that your legs, it's, it's not spiraling, for, it's not shooting a shot put. It is lifting the weight directly up, upwards. So we're not spiraling a movement outward. It's just what would you do if you were doing with a kettlebell, you would do something that would come right up through you. Yeah. Now, so if I'm standing here and I'm going to press the weight upward through myself, yeah, now, am I going to do something with my left leg to turn my leg inward? No, right? So what's going to happen if I want to make the last, 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 last little bit to put it up on the highest, highest shelf? What am I going to do? What's going to happen in the way that my legs turn into my pelvis? So the left leg is going which way? And the right leg is going clockwise, yeah? And you can sense, and it's, if you pay close attention, it's almost like there's a narrowing in the, as to where the source is, yeah? Because as you go higher and higher, don't you in some way have a sense that you're becoming narrower and narrower as to where the, the projection of force goes? Okay, so play for a moment with the left the left arm, it, and again, there's a slight difference in the way that you make the movement to reaching as if to, to grab the light or the switch or something above. That's a kind of a different process. And then switch to the idea that you're going to press weight away and just notice. Now again, where do you find the clarity of the support? I think they're slightly different in their in their in their intention and in their origin of movement yeah all right so you sense now as you make this movement that the left leg moves in what direction as you look downward into your leg which way is it turning as you with your left hand upward are you turning it clockwise or counterclockwise and your right leg what do you do do you turn it clockwise or counterclockwise if you had to really, really support the weight, the more that you would have to support, the more you, you would have to actually 
turn one clockwise and one counterclockwise in the way that the femoral head would come into the acetabulum. Yeah. We did this. We did this exact same thing when we lifted your, when we slid your knees up a little, little bit and we rolled your head forward and lifted your shoulders and then we lifted your pelvis and you, and then when you lifted your pelvis, you made the movement to, to slide up the table. Yeah. What direction? If you're going to slide as you did up the, up the, up the floor like you did, what's going to have to happen in the way that your femurs turn into your pelvis to provide you the lift through yourself and the press through yourself? Yeah. So, so we can take a moment and imagine this. All right. So please come and lie on your back now. So part of our quest is to understand how we transmit force through ourself in such a way that it can turn into work. Work meaning being able to lift mass through space. Yeah. All right, so please stand your left foot for a moment. And with all that we've explored and thought about and played with now, please begin to roll your pelvis a little to the right. And you listen the very first moment that you start this movement. And you listen to the direction that your knee wants to move. You notice if you change the pressure in your foot. And you notice how, you is, how it is that you change the pattern of pressure with your foot on the floor. You notice whether your foot wants to roll inward or outward. You notice if you increase the weight into your foot. You notice whether your knee moves away from you. And this sensation that we've been playing with of finding the where the arch, the lateral arch of your foot how to utilize the lateral arch of your foot for stability or to generate movement from. So please now make the movement in such a way that as you make the movement, that your knee neither moves inward or outwards, that you find somehow to place your lower leg and your foot under your knee so that your knee neither moves inwards or outwards. So it creates for you the, the movement and the initiation of the movement that's not done by rolling the weight of your leg or the weight of your pelvis, but it asks you to begin to initiate the movement in some manner that's related to how you lift your pelvis. And we've played with this. We looked with the different people making this movement and started to see how on one side they made the movement one way and now on the other side they made the movement the other way. And for the moment, please, again, explore if there was a pressure plate under your foot, under your left foot. How would you make this movement in such a way that you don't increase the pressure? It involves a very particular way in which the femoral head begins to engage in your pelvis, in the hip joint, so that you have the sense that you're lifting away from the solidity of the way that your foot is, rec is in contact with the floor. And for the moment, you can bring your left arm long overhead and use this as a way, excuse me, your right arm, I'm sorry your right arm overhead and, and make this movement into the process of 
lengthening yourself, if you will, as if to reach upwards or as if to push something upwards. If you were going to push a weight away, it wouldn't make sense to push the weight away and have your knee go over your foot. It would mean that if you're going to truly push the weight away, then you would continue to come away from the ground and push it away. And can you do this in a way that you make the movement without, without changing the pressure in your foot? And if you want to, then you can turn your head and eyes upwards so that you can see this movement. And the way that you can follow this movement, link by link, vertebra by vertebra, up and through your spine, it creates a long arc in your back to make this movement so that as you make the movement, the rolling of your pelvis begins to lead to a lifting of your chest away, upwards and away, as you turn to look upwards, keeping more or less your knee directed to the ceiling. So please make this movement once or twice. And it's an interesting thing. We talk all the time about spreading the force evenly throughout the whole of ourselves. And so let's take another look at this lesson and let's add a few more details to the lesson to see if we can't come to the idea of spreading the force more evenly having an even distribution of tone throughout the whole of ourselves. So leave this for a moment and rest. Please stand your foot again. And initiate the movement in this, in this location, this way of intending the movement, as if to lift and turn the femoral head into, the, into your pelvis without changing the weight of the pressure of your foot on the floor. And at the same moment that you make this movement, will you please begin to listen to how you roll over your pelvis and how you roll from the right, excuse me, from the left to the right. And the sense of rolling, the way that you lift and the way that this invites rolling. Your knee stays still. And now will you please change the movement just slightly, that as you make the movement, you make a correlative movement, the same movement in a sense. You invite your right femur, the upper part of your right femur, to turn into your pelvis at exactly the same moment that you have the sense of your left femur turning into, the, into, the, into your pelvis. And you notice that this way of turning your right femur into your pelvis begins to invite your pelvis to engage with the floor differently. Perhaps you're not rolling over yourself as much as maybe rolling into the floor. There may be some way in which you find that this, this movement. And invite your whole right leg. So it means that your femoral head turns in, but your right thigh joins the floor, the outer right knee, the way that your right calf and the way that your right heel and foot participate as you make the movement with your left so that you invite the tone to increase and spread in such a way that you sense both legs engaged. And notice now the sense of solidity that you have in the way that you make this movement.
leave that for a moment and rest again. And stand your left leg again, please. And again, make the movement of lifting your pelvis, but inviting both legs to participate, coming away from the floor on the left and rolling your right leg into your pelvis so that you sense that both legs participate. And there's a particular way in which your right leg begins to find its way into the floor. Instead of rolling over, there's a particular kind of way that you sense the connection to the floor that makes your connection to the floor solid. And as you make this movement with both legs and having this connection with your pelvis, can you tell me what is it that's taking place with your upper left arm in relationship to the floor? The way that your left hand and left elbow, the way that you make the movement. Because there's a way in which if you pay close attention, if you roll your arm one way, it makes your torso heavy to move. But if you roll your arm and connect it to the floor in, one, in another way, you can start to find that there's a, there's, there's, there's a turning movement that supports the activity of your shoulder and supports the activity of you turning. So that you can initiate or you can activate this this movement in such a way so that as you make the movement with both legs, you can begin to find this connection to the floor with your left arm, your upper left arm, your elbow, your hand. You can watch what happens to you if you roll your hand inwardly as you make the movement, which, which invites your shoulder to roll forward, as opposed to inviting the movement of your arm to roll slightly outwardly. It's not to slide your hand, it's to actually find the purchase in the floor in such a way that as you make the movement, the humeral head changes its position in the shoulder and invites a particular kind of strength and activity as you make the movement. In other words, it would be, it would, you would make it in such a way that it would be even more difficult for you to be rolled over. If someone tried to roll you back and you had this purchase, you had this, this connection with the floor. So turn on all three now. Turn on this connection with your elbows, turn on this connection. Now, and it's also interesting, if you pay attention, there's a way in which your head is engaged with the floor. You can make this movement Again, with your arm upward, or you can make it with your arm downward, your right arm. It's up to you. You can play with it. But how does your head become a part of the connection to the floor that makes it so that this movement becomes even more evenly tonified? Does your head just fall over, or is there a way in which the connection with your head is a part of the movement? And as you make this movement with your head and your arm and both legs, I would invite you now to explore what happens with your ribs under your right armpit as you reach upward. How will you reach upward and then find out what will you do with your ribs under your right armpit? How will you engage these ribs into the floor as a part of the process that makes it so that you have this connection to the floor in in spreading the distribution, the way that you spread the force, the way that you find the contact with the floor. And now for a moment, initiate these, this movement, this pattern of the movement in different ways. Please initiate this movement from under your right armpit. Make it so that under your right armpit, you engage the floor in such a way that it invites your pelvis to lift. It invites you to engage your right hip and your left hip, and it invites you to engage your head and your left elbow and your left hand. And raise and lower yourself with the initiation of under your right armpit.
Now, please initiate the movement with the back of your head, that the way that you find the support, that somehow the, your head invites your ribs to turn, where you find the point of contact, that your head can be the source of the movement. And of course, your head can relate to your left leg and your right leg and to your left elbow. And please raise and lower yourself based on what you do with your left arm, how you find the connection to the floor to make the initial movement of this lifting and turning that invites, as this invites, as this movement begins to take place, you can see that the, everything else can participate and follow. And then please make this movement by initiating the movement with your right leg, the way that your right leg joins into your pelvis and turn, starts to turn your pelvis and starts to turn this movement up and through you. And then please make this movement so that you distribute the tone evenly through the whole of yourself that Every part of yourself participates in the movement. And as you make the movement, you could slide your hand from downward to upward, or you can keep your head up, hand upward, but you can sense how it is that you engage the whole of yourself for lengthening or for pushing. Yeah. Leave this for a moment and rest. Now, we've made this movement in a particular way. If you'll look up for a moment, if you look up for a moment, we've made this movement in such a way that more or less the grand trochanter, the upper part of the thigh from the outside turned up and in, yes? For the most part, you have the sense of it turning up and in. I want to invite you now to look at the inner part of the thigh, and you'll see that there's now the lesser trochanter. So at first, we find within ourselves what is most clear. It's easy for me to take my hand and take my grand trochanter and to turn myself up and in, to have the sense that I'm turning up and in, isn't there? It's not so easy to reach into the inner part of my thigh, and it's certainly not possible for us in our practice to reach into the inner part of a person's thigh and hold the lesser trochanter. But the lesser trochanter is the attachment for major muscle groups, the psoas, but the psoas comes exactly over the top of the femoral head. And if we take this movement and we turn, instead of having the idea that we turn from the outside, but we actually make this movement that we turn this movement up and in from the inside, so that you invite the turning instead of from out here in, that you play with the idea of what it's like to turn the movement up and into the more central, more central line with yourself. The top of the femur rests, as we've shown you, directly under the, the line of the sacrum, the, where the sacrum and the, and the pelvis join each other. Yeah? So then you're actually turning this right into the most central point for yourself. So now please, with your right leg, or excuse me, your left leg, please make the movement now. So one time, you make it as if you're turning from the outside up and in, and the next time, make the movement as if you're turning from the inside up and in. It's an interesting sensation when you start to make these distinctions as to how you engage the, the rotational capability So you find this sensation of turning the inner part of your humeral, femoral head and at the same time do the same with your, with your left leg. 
your left leg and your right leg, I'm sorry. So your left leg is standing and you keep finding this, you find the inner sensation and you find the inner sensation with your right leg as well. In other words, how can you give yourself the sense that you have given yourself the absolute clearest support possible for your sacrum? The clearest support possible that when you make the movement, you sense that your pelvis and the lifting that you're making provides you with an absolute clear sense of support through your sacrum and a projection from your sacrum up through your spine, like your spine begins to move and pass through you like a piston. And at the same time, include your arm and your armpit and the way that your left shoulder and the way that your right shoulder, the purchase, where you find all the points of connection with yourself to the ground so that you find the, what it means to really, truly distribute the tone evenly through the whole of yourself, that no place works harder than any other place and that you can make this distribution of tone because you find the support from which it can be discovered, it can be initiated, it can, it can, it can be engaged. Now, hold yourself up with this whole connection and then simply have your left arm go soft and watch what happens. And then re-engage your left arm and then have your and then have your arm your right under your right armpit lose its connection and lose its its tonicity what happens what happens if you change this this the vibrancy of this turning of your femoral heads up and into yourself and you collapse your arch or you simply roll your pelvis across yourself rather than make the movement up and through what happens to the sense of even distribution of tone? All right, please leave that and rest for a moment. And please, for yourself now, take a few moments and bring some of these ingredients with your right foot standing. And make the first press and notice, and then begin to, and if you, if it's not clear for you, and it was clear for you on the other side, go to the other side again and bring little elements And again, one of the things that we talked about is how this movement for most people is asymmetrical. That it takes a moment. One side might be very, very easy. It's your left arm will be long overhead now. It's your left, it's your right foot standing. You're making the diagonal movement. It's not really a diagonal, isn't it? It's more of a, it's more of a spinal twist, isn't it? There's a twisting movement that takes place. to find out how you locate and how many elements have we explored. We started in the very beginning with the notion of lifting and even beginning to make the distinction between pushing. Last week we made, when we did this lesson a little bit, part of it, some of it, but now we're asking for more distinctions about the possibility of making the movement.
so it's your right leg and you can experiment with the turning the outer thigh up and in or turning the inner thigh up and in and then it's the engagement of your left leg and of course as you bring your left leg into the scene whether you roll across yourself or whether there's a way in which your left leg begins to engage the floor that it's sort of like it's almost like your leg itself can roll you up and you engage this movement the inner part of your femoral head the inner part of your femur the lesser trochanter or the image of the grand trochanter the image that you can find of this relationship of where the femoral head engages your sacrum and the way that you can find the evenness of support of both legs as you're making this movement to support your sacrum so that it's not a shearing force across your sacrum but a potent kind of activity and of course then there's your right elbow and your right arm and your lower arm and the way your hand touches and your left ribs near your under your armpit and the way your head touches and the way that you find the rolling of your your arm if you're going to reach high how your arm your left arm participates with the floor There's a difference between rolling over yourself and rolling into the floor to support the movement. Now, just for the moment, please bring both arms by your sides. <clears throat> rest for a moment, rest long. Bring both legs to standing, please. Begin, begin to lift your pelvis. And again, notice in the very beginning whether your knees want to come together. Then notice whether your initial movement, your knees begin to go away. You notice for yourself, whether you increase the weight in your feet on the floor, or whether you have this connection to the floor that you can lift yourself away from. And as you initiate the movement, you notice which leg initiates the movement first in your hip joints, so that you lift one, and you come back, and you lift the other and come back. And you notice the difference that if you're going to lift your pelvis in this way, you can wrap, you can wrap the outer thigh as if to bring it up into the pelvis and in, or you can begin to lift as if to bring the inner, the lesser trochanter, the inner part of your femoral head, as if to come to bring the line in a way from the edges of your feet, the potent point place that your feet stand 
to have this movement lift. It's almost like you're lifting your pubic bone from right underneath your pubic bone. So if you really look to see what's taking place in the way the bones, the way the femoral head comes into your pelvis. And at the same time that you make this movement, will you then see how can you support this movement? There may be a way in which as you make the movement that your scapula can capture the floor and invite to slide and cut into the floor that as your pelvis lifts, your scapula are engaged as if to glide backwards and downwards and then actually lift upward into your ribs, your scapula become part of the way in which your chest lifts. And of course, with that, again, in what direction does your, do your elbows move? Do you turn your elbows inwardly? Do you turn your hands inwardly? How do you find the spiraling movement? The spiraling movement in which you engage all of your extensors, engage yourself for lifting away from the floor. We're making what is a very primitive movement in the sense that it invites the primitive action of lifting yourself away from the floor. Now, once again, leave it for a moment and rest. And now, please, with your legs long, raise your pelvis from the floor. With your legs long, lift your pelvis from the floor. So it's not so much by bending your knees. It means that you have to find some process, some way in which, and clearly, are your toes going to come together or apart? Where would, in what direction will you find the points of support on your heels to make it possible to lift your pelvis from the floor to arc up into what in yoga would be the fish pose in one sense, yeah? we took it to the next step and you were under your elbows and you could come up onto your head and this would be the fish pose. And again, as you make the movement to lift your pelvis from the floor, again, notice which side. It may take several moments of making the movement for you to sense how to make to engage yourself enough that you can lift. And maybe lift a little with the right first and then the left, and then a little bit the left first and the right. Or when you're up, as you're going up, go back and forth, rocking yourself on the way up until you can find out more or less that you can turn the inner part of your thigh right up and into yourself as if to lift. That's it. And of course, good. Leave this and rest again for a moment. Now please draw your heels to you just a little bit. And as you draw your heels, it means that your knees bend a little bit. It's not the frog movement. You can lift your knees more or less directly upwards a little bit. Well, wait, wait, just, just a little bit, a couple centimeters, not, not far. You just draw them to you. And at the moment that your knees begin to fold a little bit, once again, you fold your shoulders forward. And if you wish, you can lift your head forward at the same time. That's right. 
Now, please stand your feet for a moment so that you can get the idea of something that's, that's important. If I ask you to simply lift your head as if to look between your legs, how would you do it? How would you do it? It's an interesting thing, this process of lifting your head as if to look between your legs. It means that for the most part, people lift their forehead and then they bring themselves forward. Now, just for the moment, just as a, as a difference. Now, we have many different things that we do with this. You've, you've all had the mo op opportunity probably to, to put your hands on your sternum and to press your sternum downward as a part of lifting your head. Yes. And so you've, there are different ways that, we've, that you've been learned to to bring your lower back toward the floor as you lift your head. Let's play with something just for a moment, just different. Imagine now that, that someone or you have your own hands underneath your own sit bones. And now imagine that at the moment that you're to lift your head, that someone presses or you press your own hands into your sit bones in such a way that it thrusts your spine like a piston up and through your head to drive your head forward. So instead of lifting your head from the front of yourself, it's more like you drive your head forward. So play for a moment with the idea of having this connection from your sit bones through your, through your spine like a piston to drive your head forward. Of course, it means that your lower back comes to the ground. But you see that the weight of your head becomes something really quite different, doesn't it? Now, please, once again, lengthen your legs. And as you fold your knees a little bit, draw your heels to you a little bit, and as you bring your shoulder forward, Find out how to make it so that you can lift your head forward at the same time, so that your spine becomes a piston that helps your head to lift forward. So it's not lifting the weight of your head, it's like you're driving the weight of your head forward. So you fold your knees, you fold your shoulders and lift your head. And then when you're, you're folded and lifted, then please, Lift your pelvis, and as you lift your pelvis, your shoulders come back and down underneath yourself, and you drive your head again forward, and excuse me, upward, so that you make this worm-like crawling movement that we made the other day, but you add other elements to it so that you can really, truly, as you, the moment that your pelvis is lifted, then your shoulders drop back and down, your head drops back and down, and you use the lifting and driving of your pelvis upward and the, and the connecting of your shoulders underneath like tractor tires or like a, like a, the, a bulldozer, the way that the, the shoulders connect into the ground and are part of pulling you up. So there's a connection between this thrusting through your legs from your heels upward and the connection of your shoulders moving back and down and the way that your spine moves upward like a piston. That's right. Now, please leave this and stand your left foot. And please make the movement of lifting your pelvis now with all that you've come to know about the inner, the outer, the, sen ah, the sense of your foot without changing your knee, without changing the pressure. 
finding the ability to lift up and into yourself the connection with your left arm the connection with your right leg the connection with just see what it's like now to make the initial the movement that we started with this morning and see if there's not some difference in the in the ability to make the reference movement that we started with now make this with a real pop pop that's it that's it so you make this with a real popping movement pop marvelous please make the 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 comparison or make the lift your right leg stand your right leg and make the movement And you notice again, whether you enter into the old world where your knee goes away and you roll your knee inward, or whether you have within yourself the ability to initiate the movement as you would, as you would like to initiate the movement so that you give yourself the sensation of lifting yourself away from the floor. Right. Please, one last time, lift your pelvis with both legs. Sense the experience of lifting. Find where your pelvis lifts too easily. Pay attention to your inner working knowledge of how to make this more and more successful, concrete, easy for yourself. And then, please, when you're ready, roll to your side and come to stand. And when you're standing now, take a moment and sense your experience relative to the floor. the sense of the solidity with which you're standing over your legs, the sense of centrality, and then please reach up to with your right hand and sense when you reach up with your right hand, the way that you engage and Initiate the movement of the lifting by the way that you turn your femur into your pelvis. And then since that's beautiful, all of a sudden I see the life come into people. Yeah, when they turn everything on to make the lift. Otherwise, it's just my hand and then I do Lift. That's it. And make the movement to the left. And you can see the way that the movement the way that you power the movement, where the movement comes from, if you're going to really... And think now of pushing the weight upward. Push the weight. Put Have your hand underneath the weight and push it upward and see what you would do to push it. Very nice. Please leave it and we'll pull the tables out so you can put the mats away and bring the tables out.